Welcome back to Conversations at Cannes, powered by Porter Novelli, live from the Mo Film Studios. It's day two, and we're very excited to have with us Brian Morrissey, the digital editor of Adweek. Welcome, Brian. Thanks. Thanks for having me. How's uh, everything going so far? So far, so good. I got in yesterday, so I'm now sort of recovered from jet lag and ready to go for the rest of the week. Great, great. Yeah, we're at day two now, so we're starting to hear all about all the early trends, the buzz, uh, the short list came out this morning for the PR lines. There's a lot of activity happening all around us. Um, and today we'd like to talk to you a little bit about your experience at Cannes and maybe ask you a few questions about uh, the festival. Uh, starting with the, uh, the buzzword at this year's festival, which is, of course, social media. And um, recently, actually, you've spoken about social media at great lengths. So you've even actually put together a list of social media marketing myths. We'd love to find out which myths you would like to see dispelled at Ken this year. Well, I mean, maybe just related to social media, but I think a big myth um, at Ken that hopefully will be um, changed uh, this year or maybe over the next couple of years is this idea of creativity being divorced from um, accountability. I think, um, you know, historically, Ken has been a creative driven festival and results have not been looked at because they think that impinges on creativity. Mm. I don't think that's really possible anymore, particularly because of social media. Because mm. a lot of the goals of these campaigns are to get people to share things on their own. And now with social media, we, we can see who shares it. So I think when the judges are evaluating campaigns, they really intuitively know whether or not these things have been successful. Mm. So we're seeing success metrics because of social media creep into how creative-driven advertising awards are given. Mm -hmm. And in terms of these, the, the metrics, I mean, obviously, um, ROI is really important. And at Cannes, we have a mixture of creatives. We also have a lot of companies and brands present. Mm -hmm. And they've been talking about more accountability from social media for quite a while. And perhaps maybe even that's one of the reasons why we've seen a, a, a slower uptake than we would like. Um, what is your thought on that level of accountability that comes from, from clients? Are, do, you, do you feel like they expect it from the creative process now? Well, I mean, definitely. I mean, look, I mean, the recession uh, was painful for a lot of people. Mm. I mean, it was most yeah. painful for people that couldn't show results for what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I think with social media, I mean, like you're saying, like the shift there has not been as great as many people have hoped. Mm -hmm. and I think that'll just that's just because you know big shifts take a time, a right. long time to turn. Right. But I think the big thing is until social media can really prove business results, mm -hmm. it's really going to be tough to have big money going. Anywhere. I mean, everyone talks about something like Foursquare. I think I've heard Foursquare mentioned a lot of times here. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, I mean, Foursquare is still unbelievably small, and it's really, really, really difficult to prove beyond PR metrics, which mm -hmm. is we're going to do a program with Foursquare, and we're going to get written up by National and New York right. Times, Bits right. Blog, and all this. Right. But actually showing that like, this is moving cases, mm -hmm. that's going to be the real test for social media. Mm -hmm. And, and what metrics do you see as being most valuable to moving that advertising uh, budget forward, right? Um, what, what do you think is, is going to be the, uh, the, the hinge on which um, uh, the ROI conversation eventually turns? I mean, ultimately, I mean, it's going to have to be tracked back to sales. I mean, whether it's not, it's not going to be direct marketing exactly, but I mean, eventually, you're going to have to prove business results for the client. Like, I was speaking with... Um, an executive from Unilever yesterday, and they're here to talk about this thing they did with Sapien, this, um, this happiness um, vending machine where you go in and if you smile, you get a free thing of ice cream. And it's really interesting and cool and creative and, and people in Cannes love it and everything like that. But then he admitted, he said, look, you know, this is in two markets. For this to go to 100 markets, we have to know that there's going to be real business results. Mm -hmm. Right now, we just don't know it. Mm -hmm. So it's just a tiny little test. Mm -hmm. So until you can actually prove to Unilever that they're selling more ice cream because of this, then it's going to stay a little small. And hasn't that always been the problem at the at the top end of the purchase funnel, is, is proving real business results? I mean, I think I think it's, it's sort of been a constant issue. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't think social media is any different in that it's been a constant issue for anything that's building awareness. Mm -hmm. But I mean, social media has been sort of sold as this engagement and feedback thing. And that's great and everything like that. But until, because it's new, yeah, I mean, it's going to have a burden of actually mm -hmm. showing that it's going to move the needle in the results. And I don't think, I just don't think the sample size is large enough right now mm -hmm. to justify big shifts in the 